What's it like been around the, the Leinster campus well, since that defeat to Saracens? Uh, yeah, we had to move on pretty quickly, obviously. Um, couldn't sit around too long feeling sorry for ourselves. It obviously hurt, it hurts a lot when you work that hard to get to somewhere and um, fall at that hurdle. But like I said, we've had to move on very quickly. We've got a new season upon us already, so um, straight back into it, really. Yeah, I suppose Leo said afterwards that the team were a bit kind of spooked uh, by it. You know, have you looked in as to why you were that way? And, and did you, obviously you came on as a sub, but did you do you think he had a point in that? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. I mean, a team as good as Saracens, you can't afford to get behind. And unfortunately, that was the way it ended up. And um, we just couldn't get any momentum, certainly in the first half, and kind of clawed our way back, but by then it was too late. And, I think that's the one thing you can't do against a team like Saracens because they're very good, very clever, and they just do their best to slow the game down, the juice ball out of play time, and then it gets very difficult to get yourself back into the game. So, um, yeah, obviously, bitterly disappointed, but um, there's a silver lining as we get to move on to a new season straight away. So, uh, Jameson, hi, Paul here from. Just following off on that, really, I mean, how much do you welcome that, that uh, normally you'd have two or three months to kind of smart over a loss like that, but you're straight back into a new season. It must be welcome, but a little bit strange, is it? Yeah, like you say, very strange. Um, obviously, none of us have quite experienced this before. I suppose some of the guys, when you um, finish your season, when you go into an international, but um, for, for a lot of us, it's very unique and... Um, I suppose, uh, an interesting challenge, but one with the no doubt. And in, in terms of just your own kind of personal life, you know, how strange is it at the moment? How, how, how strange is it to be living in this world and with all the different COVID restrictions? Yeah, it's crazy, man. Um, obviously for me as well, because I have a lot of family that back in New Zealand and they're kind of carrying on with life as usual, um, which is sometimes tough. We're like thinking, by God, when are we even going to get it there? But... Um, yeah, man, it is what it is. What can we do about it? I suppose just um, do your best. Don't do anything crazy. Wear your mask, and you know, <laughs> hopefully we can get through this soon. Great, thanks. All right, guys. Just there is a bit of feedback from the floor, so if you're not asking a question, can you please put your device on mute? Thank you. Yeah, uh, Jameson. A lot of people are comparing the the various global leagues now, from the French league, the Premiership, uh, the Pro 14. Um, and also, I think Aotearoa uh, Super Rugby, and of course, you had the, the North Island, South Island game there as well recently. H how do you compare all of those leagues with with the Pro 14? Um, it's a difficult question, I suppose. It's interesting for us, well, certainly in the Northern Hemisphere, where we're playing between countries, because you look at, obviously, the Premiership and Top 14, they've got the benefit of of having a lot more teams. We've only got the four teams, so we're going to have to to go overseas to get competition. Um, that's just a matter of fact. That's the way it is. Um, but I mean, it's it's obviously a strong competition. We've got interest now from obviously the South African teams. What happens there, we don't know. But um, yeah, I love it, man. As a competition, we get to travel a little bit. Um, see a little bit of the world and test itself against some of the best, so. Thanks. Um, Jamison, um, do you think the um, format this year, which has been obviously um, uh, completely changed with the COVID situation, that playing the Pro 14 final a week before you went into the European Cup uh, a quarter final had any effect on the, on your game or did it impinge any bit do you think no i don't think so um it's just the way things work out you know with the reshuffle schedule um that was the way it fell and um yeah unfortunately we just went off for it on a day i didn't think it had anything to do with with the final being the week before and I mean, um, Saracen's uh, quick start and sort of putting points up and and those long range penalties uh, from um, 
from uh, Ali, or, uh, Elliot Daly. I mean, does that kind of get into your head a bit? Uh, no, I don't think so. It's obviously the big learning for us is just you have to be disciplined. You can't afford to give away penalties against teams like that because we know he's a sharp shooter. I mean, look at him on the Lions tour and that he was unbelievable from the tee. So, yeah, that's the biggest thing. I think for us, you have to be a lot more disciplined against a team or someone like that and get goals from anyway. Thanks. Jameson, how's it going? It's Pat McCarry here. Um, listen, I was just wondering about, you know, you're, you're, you've been eligible to play for Ireland now for almost a year, but um, in, in great form there anyway when the league started back in Europe and... Um, is it something that if you have a good start to the season, you're, you're looking to do, get involved in the, the Ireland squad with Andy Farrell? Yeah, look, I mean, I hope so, but uh, the first port of call from here is I have to get in the nine jumper in Leicester, so it's pretty stiff competition with the Luke at the moment, and as well as the two younger guys coming through the training pretty well and all that, so um, yeah, it's my number one obligation at the minute is to try and get in that nine jumper as much as I can. And is it a great, you know, as you said, it's a great thing to have Luke there to kind of spar with him on a daily basis. And if you know, if, if you're getting ahead of him, you're you're going in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. Bang on. Um, I, I was wondering about yourself as well. Um, I think you were eligible. A lot of people thought you might have even been a bolter for last year's World Cup. Like, were there any conversations with Joe Schmidt around this time last year? Um, no, a couple of very short, blunt texts. <laughs> 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 to be honest, but... Uh, I chatted with him a couple of times around until he came to our captain's run one day, but nothing too crazy. And, and you're you're from Auckland yourself back home. Um, I was kind of wondering, you know, I know James went home there, you know, a few months back, but did you stay in Ireland the whole time and you just had to kind of stay and switch with people over, you know, Zoom and FaceTime? Yeah, got pretty good at Zoom and all that kind of crap like everyone did. But uh, yeah, I've got a young family, so um, it's easy for James to just jump on a jet because he's... <laughs> Just having a blessing, like, um, but I've got two little kids, so it would have been a bit of a trick. But uh, that was good, I suppose. That silver lining was I got to spend a lot of time with them, so um, like everyone and their families, some probably a little too much, but that's the way it was, you know. And are you looking forward to the um, almost the novelty of you know, you guys had your first few games all in the Aviva, like, but the novelty of actually maybe getting out and getting on the road for a few games as well, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, look forward to it. I think we're down to Italy next week at Treviso. So, uh, yeah, look forward to it. It's going to be an interesting challenge. But at um, the end of the day, I think we just have to perform, uh, focus on performing on the pitch. You can't really control any of that other stuff. So it is what it is, you know. Cheers, Jameson. Last time to the floor, guys, if anyone has any follow-up questions. Yeah, just, uh, just a question on Rob Kearney as well. How did you find the experience playing alongside him over the last few years? Unreal, man. He's an incredibly intelligent guy, and I think, uh, yeah, feel privileged, I suppose, to to have played with him. Him and Fergus, a couple of great lads, and um, that we sorely missed. It was even quiet in here today, just without, without the two of them. It's kind of weird, take a while to get used to, especially Fergie's always the life of the dressing room. But um, that's that's rugby, man. Stuff moves on quickly, and. Uh, yeah, but I wish them all the best. So.